So anyhow, so today, Chef Moonen, he's going to be preparing pan-fried sea bass, and he's going to actually have this mirror so that you can actually see how he does it. It's going to be a great... And, and just a couple quick questions as we get set up here. You are a, a master at cooking seafood. Why, why is it that seafood has such a passion in your heart? Well, um, I guess because I love all food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got typecast years ago in uh, the, uh, the 90s, 1994, I started um, working at a restaurant called Oceana in New York City. <laughs> I think we're going to do this so that you guys can hear better from the speakers, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I like it. And Stephanie, <laughs> if, if I could really get you to come over here. Yeah. So, yeah. Am I supposed to talk down? Well, that's the problem. It's like, it's a very directional microphone. <laughs> that's not what we're going to worry about. Welcome to Memorial City. So, anyhow, so what's going to happen is that we're going to have Stephanie and she's going to um, be the lucky one to hold the microphone as as you cook, and um, she'll do the the best. And I, yeah, and I'm going to and I'm going to get out of the way. You can keep the microphone on, but we're also going to have Stephanie hold it so that you can hear people through there. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming for the VIP section here. Let's hear it for Chef. Thank you, Chef. There you go. Enjoy the demonstration. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, so what I'm going to show you today is a dish off the menu of Curry's, which is just uh, two minutes, two minutes uh, down the road here. Are you going to put that in my face? He's going to have the water. All right, you can do that. I'll try to talk loud. <laughs> so this is one of the seafood items on the Perry's uh, Steakhouse and Grill. There's 15 locations. Seven of them are in Houston. Right here, Memorial City is a uh, newly renovated location. Highly recommend if you haven't been there to check it on out. Well known for many different things. Flaming desserts, tableside carvings, signature cocktails, amazing food all around. It's not just steak. Some of it is seafood as well. Like this beautiful piece of Ooh, yes. sea bass I'm holding up right here. That's a gorgeous piece of fish. Look at that. Yes, it is. That is that's from the southern uh, Antar uh, Antarctic. Wow. And, uh, the, it's a deep, it's a deep uh, swimming fish. Cold, cold waters. I have to remove the skin for this dish, so I'm gonna start off by. I don't know if you can see this. Is this, is this even helping you at all? Uh, yeah. Tilt it down. Tilt it down. This way. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. The fish. All right. So you just gotta catch, gotta catch the skin. Here. Hey, move it up a little bit. Go down a little bit. Yeah. It was the other way. Yeah, a little bit more the other way. Hello. That's way? right. This way? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. 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 Come up here. We can all agree. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the floor in front of me. This is fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Right, so, pulling the skin off. 
in off of this beautiful Ooh, piece yes. of bed. So, hey, this is a fish that's got a lot of uh, natural fat in it, mm -hmm. which is, makes it so attractive. Chilean sea bass, also known, previously known as uh, Patagonian toothfish. Not a popular name. You know, if you go to a restaurant and they come over and say, special tonight is uh, toothfish, and you're like, uh, bass. <laughs> so they changed the name to, to sea bass, uh, Chilean sea bass, and it's a gorgeous cloud of uh, fish. Now, in Perry's, we put a night, we give you a really good portion. Oh, nice, yeah. thick, eight ounce of a of, of piece of filet of, of Chilean sea bass. I'm also known for sustainability now. The yeah. question would arise, what about Chilean sea bass? I heard that Chilean sea bass isn't sustainable. We're yeah. very particular about where we source our products in Perry's. We're known for the pork chop. We, get, we know the farmers. We know where they come from. We get the center loin cut. It's seven fingers tall. It's 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 rolled in. It's rolled in a, a proprietary blend of, of uh, seasonings, and then it's rotisserie roasted in the smoker for four to six hours, and then it's served to you. There's if you haven't had any over here in the main main area, we're serving the pork chop bites. Just a little bite-sized morsel of that big, well-known uh, pork chop. So what we're going to do with this is we want to infuse some flavor. We want to add a little bit of salt to this because what salt does when you add salt to a piece of fish or anything it starts to draw out the moisture so you're going to pull some of the moisture out of this fish and it also while it's doing so it's concentrating the flavors and it's changing the texture slightly because uh, it, it gets more flaky so you get those flaky pieces of uh shiny filled with omega-3 fatty acids yeah. and delicious what you're looking for brain food that's exactly this is what we're this is what we're having here with this uh, sea bass so we put a little salt on there some fresh cracked plepper plepper yeah we made that up we can't get plepper like just anywhere <laughs> just here at the memorial city today limited time only so okay so there's your sea bass what i have here is a, a cilantro oil what i do is i take fresh cilantro a little jalapeno some scallions some salt and some grapeseed oil and I make a puree oh. out of it. And that's what we marinate the sea bass. Oh, we got it. We got it on recording. We want to do this overnight because it's such a thick piece of fish that we want to make sure that it has a chance to uh, to go through the transformation and absorbing the flavors that we're looking for. So I just yeah, squish it in here. Squishy, squishy. And that's the, uh, that's the cilantro uh, mixture, puree. Seal it up, move it around in there, put that in your refrigerator overnight, and that's going to be what we're going to cook up for you as the final product. But you'll see that the filet is slightly green when you get it. There's a reason for it. <laughs> Here it is. It's the cilantro oil. Okay. So, the components of this dish are a uh, pan seared uh, sea bass with a sweet corn pudding or sweet cor cream cream corn so mm. fresh corn first thing we want to do is just take the corn off the cob by sliding your knife down this the side of it don't worry about getting too close to the cob because we're going to scrape the cob to get all that milk out of it so many people when they're making cream corn or they're cutting corn off the cob they neglect Probably the sweet, one of the sweetest parts of the corn that you get when you're eating it. When you're eating a, a, a corn off the cob, you're you're getting down dirty into the. You're getting right close to that that cob. All inside of that part that I just cut the kernels off. There's a ton of milk, and it's sweet. And it's got all the the, the uh, thickening agents that you're looking for when you're making your cream corn as well. So I got three heads, three ears, heads, ears of corn. Cut off all those kernels. Now there's there's a couple of ways you could take the uh, the milk out of the uh, of the final uh, of, the, of, the, of the, the cob. I don't know if you can see this. You can scrape it with the back of your knife, like that. No. Yeah, we gotta go. And I'm gonna show you how much is in one ear of corn. That's all. That's all the puree and the, the corn, the, the milk, the sweetness oh, wow. that, that's hidden inside of those little. Um, um, I don't know, pockets of where the, 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 the kernels of corn hold on to. Let me scrape away. 
put this right into a pot. When I'm making something like cream corn, I want it to be simple. I want it to be uh, just the fewest ingredients possible because I want it to taste like corn when I'm done. But I want it to, it's about consistency, seasoning, and, and getting out of the way of the, the, the natural flavors of the sweet corn. So, here we go. We put all of this into a, into a sauce pot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna hope that this works in the wind. We're gonna turn the heat on, the little flame under it. It's on right now, and we're gonna find some uh, a little bit of heavy cream, mm. just enough to cover it. Yeah. You know, about one cup or so, a cup and a half of heavy cream for that amount. Oh, that was good. Of corn. And so we're gonna allow that to come up to a simmer and start to cook. We're gonna season it with a little bit of salt, pepper. Salt, pepper, and heat, and corn, and cream. What can go wrong, right? <laughs> All right, when that comes to a simmer, we're gonna thicken it slightly with some toasted cornmeal. So I take yellow cornmeal and I put it in an oven for a low temperature oven, 250, 275 for about 20 minutes. And it's, it, it gets a toasting. It gets a nice light um, browning uh, effect on, on, the, on the cornmeal. We're gonna add a little bit of that to the, to the um, simmering cream and fresh corn, the corn milk, to, uh, to, to make what I call a corn pudding, cream corn. So I'm gonna wait for that to, to come up. Meanwhile, over in this pot, we're going to make some red pepper coulis. Oh, yes. First thing you need, red a red pepper. pepper. Good start, right? So, can you see this? Yes. Sort of, kind of? Yes. All right, so just take the top and the bottom off the pepper, cut in half, remove the, remove the, uh, the seeds and some of the, some of the ribs. Most people take, chefs usually like to take the ribs out. That's, that's, that's the center. To the side. Don't throw the tops and the bottoms out. This has just as much flavor as this. And this is all going to be a puree in the end, so we want all the red pepper we can get. And we're going to combine this um, bell pepper with a uh, piquillo pepper, which is a Spanish red bell pepper that's been uh, red, that's been roasted and, um, and you know, stored. <laughs> so what I do with this is I just cut it up into small pieces. Turn this, down. this guy on too. So you still feel the heat, so that's good news. All right, so it, there's really no um, no specific cut for the uh, for the peppers. You just want to cook them, you know. And, then, and so it's just basically I'm just cut, cutting them into large dice. Okay, so one one red bell pepper. I'm gonna get some shallots and garlic. Challenge is like a, a quick cooking onion that's a, it's a, that almost has a little garlicky taste to it. Shallots you see a lot in the use of seafood dishes because they cook so quick. You don't have to cook it as long as you cook a regular onion to get all of that onion-y onion nests out of it. <laughs> Making up words today. Okay, so you need a few cloves of garlic. Slice your, slice your shallot. Again, it's not necessarily a knife cutting um, exercise unless you want it to become one because you're gonna be throwing it in a blender when it's all cooked at the end. So just mash up some garlic. Just chop it up a little bit so it's minced. Again, no one's gonna, no one's gonna take points away from you if you don't uh, Cut it up properly because it's pretty simple. We're just going to take some extra virgin olive oil, put it into this pan, this pot that I've been heating up. <laughs> Add our peppers and our shallots and our garlic together. Ooh, didn't make that noise. Didn't make that. that should be pretty hot. Oh, we got some extra pieces. Stick it all in there. Don't 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 waste any of it. So. 
the piquillo peppers that I brought up are going to be added, but it's going to be added next because they're wet. I want the garlic and the shallots and the olive oil and the peppers to uh, meld together in the, uh, in, in the uh, pan, pot. So that's to cook for a minute. Over here we have the, uh, the cream is just about to come to a boil, which is awesome. Any questions? You have a question? Come on, ask a question. Don't be scared, she's shy. Huh? <laughs> so Perry's restaurants have been around for 40 years. We're celebrating our 40th year anniversary and um, just rolled out a, a brand new dessert on Monday. It's a baked Alaska made with lemon custard and an orange cookie and a, and a, and a vanilla cloud that's flamed with Grand Marnier tableside for two people. Ay, ay, ay. Mm. You gotta try it, it's unbelievable. You'll be addicted. Now you can add herbs to this too. The pepper coulis, some fresh thyme, basil, whatever it is you want. I keep it clean. This dish is about the contrast. There's going to be some acidity in the peppers. I'm going to add some cherry, uh, some uh, champagne vinegar to it. So that's this is sweetness from the corn naturally, no sugar added. The uh, acidity from the peppers and the, uh, the earthy pungency of the red pepper. And then we've got the natural. Ocean, oceanic flavors of uh, the Chilean sea bass that have been mellowed out with a little bit of cilantro oil. So the idea is just everything just kind of melting together. You know? And to make it look pretty too. Okay, so while that's, the peppers are starting to soften up with the shallots and the garlic. So these are, these are piquillo peppers. These are peppers that have been um, roasted and peeled and then put in a, a, a light brine. So. You don't have to do anything to them other than cut them up. This adds a nice red color to it too. When you roast, when you roast a pepper like this and you peel them, they tend to get really dark red. You want that that ruby red uh, um, pepper uh, color because it, it, it makes the makes the uh, coulis much more attractive. So I can smell the garlic now, the shallots and the garlic before it starts to brown. I'm going to add the piquillo peppers. That's basically like adding liquid because the, the, the piquillo peppers are wet. Season them with salt, pepper. Notice whenever I say and pepper, it's not coming through my fingers. It's out of a pepper mill. Don't, don't be taking powdered pepper and putting it in your food. It's not gonna, it's, it's, it's not gonna make the food any better. You just use the pepper. Mm -hmm. So the cream has come to a boil. Look, I just loved about the cup of corn and how better it is. I have been eating. So it's corn, heavy cream. I'm just going to put in a little bit of uh, the toasted uh, cornmeal, a couple of tablespoons. Not a lot, just enough to kind of give it a some body. Somebody. Give it some body. So okay, so this is cooking nicely. Peppers, garlic, shallots, piquillo peppers, bell peppers, everything's in there. There's a big party going on in there. So we're going to add some white wine. You know, whatever wine you might be drinking, put a little bit in there. Start it off. That adds some. That adds a little fruitiness, a little bit of acidity. Oh, yeah, there we go. Wine's starting to thicken up a little bit. I can't see this. I can't see the flame. I want that to be low. There we go. Don't be afraid to cook it down. Let the cream reduce with the corn, and the corn milk, and all of those the carbohydrates and the sugars. Um, actually, carbohydrates are sugars. They're just concentrated uh, sugars. Okay, the white wine, I'm reducing it almost dry. How we make a red pepper coulis. What is a coulis? I don't know. Yeah. That's a sauce. Fancy word for a puree. That's what it is. You can charge more money if you call it coulis. That's 
slowly cook the corn. Can you see the corn? No. Yes. Yeah. You see that corn? Yes. See what's happening in here? Yes. See what's happening in here? Oh, the peppers yeah. are cooking nicely. I want them to be soft. But I don't want to cook it too long. I just want to reduce the wine long enough to uh, uh, concentrate its flavors. Do you think about it? It's wine. It's up against the flavors of garlic and shallots and peppers. It right. doesn't stand a chance, but when it reduces, it's a contender oh, it flavor so good. enhancer. It's all good things. And don't be afraid to think about what's going on in your pot. Because the way I'm describing food is the way I think about food. I really, really just go, what's going on in there for real, you know? It's caramelizing. Caramelizing makes it sweeter, you know? The carbohydrates are being broken down. And as the carbohydrates break down, they get sweet because that's what it is. You know, when you put a piece of bread in your mouth, your saliva starts to break down carbohydrates into the simple syrup, the sugars that, it, is, 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 that it's composed of. Okay, so my peppers are good. Put them in my bowl part of my blender. Add a little bit of um, champagne vinegar. For the acidity? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> You're right. Not an exploding all over the place. I love my vitamins. So always take, take the middle thing out. If you're, if you're going to puree, if you're going to put something in a blender and uh, you're going to puree while it's still hot, always take the top out so it gives the steam a place to escape to. And I'm going to still put a top, I'm going to put something on there just in case. Jump around, jump around. <laughs> okay, so while that's, while that's moving around, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil to it to create an emulsion. Basically thickening it up. The liquid in that, in that, um, in the bowl here and the oil are now just wrapping around each other and, and, and staying in suspension. And if it doesn't stay in suspension, it's called a broken sauce. And you can you can reinforce you can re emulsify it. So a good amount of olive oil. Turn it off. Let's give it a little taste. See if you like it. It's good good red color. It needs a little more oil. Put the blender on way too high if you're using extra virgin olive oil. It tends to take a little bit of the bitterness. It, exa it, it, it um, accentuates the bitterness of the extra virgin olive oil. Okay, that's ready to go. So that goes off to the side. Okay, putting a pan on the, fl on the fire to get it to preheat it. This is, for, this is gonna be, I'm gonna give you a cooking demo on how to pan. Can you see over here better? Is this better? Okay, uh, that's where I'll cook them no, today. No, no. Now, I'll take this thing off because my hands are sweating. Okay. Sea bass, sitting overnight in our marinade, cilantro oil, jalapenos, scallions, garlic. And grape seed oil, and all beautiful things. Because I seasoned it uh, before, you know, I, and I lightly seasoned it. When you think about it, a piece of fish this big, the amount of seasoning I put on it isn't isn't a, a, a great amount. So this is slightly seasoned, but I'm gonna season it a little bit more. Um, even though I've been waiting for this to get good. Enough. So we got our corn ready. We got our puree ready. Yay, we're on our way. Everything okay on time too. All right, so pan searing or butter basting is what we're going to show you here. This is a great way to cook fish. It's like, it's, um, it ends up giving you all the benefits of the brown butter. If you don't fish, lemon and brown butter works great. It's natural. It's, it's one of the most popular uh, sauces, a pan sauce for fish. Just putting a little bit of butter and lemon in there and pouring it over the top of some capers or some parsley or whatever. Some people put wine in there. 
but th this would take in the best of all worlds. It's the brown bits of butter that taste the best. Mm -hmm. and that's what we want to accomplish. We want that to stick to the fish. And we don't want all that fat in the end. We just want the brown bits. Right. It's a piece that tastes good. You know, it's like flipping over your Italian ice and get to the bottom with all the flavors. <laughs> New York reference, sorry. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of oil in this pan to just coat the bottom of it. Take our bass out of its marinade. Bassinade. <laughs> and lay it into the pan. Just leave it. Don't mess with it. Too many people. Leave. You know, just you gotta let your you gotta let your food cook. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little more seasoning on it though. It needs it. And this is just the beginning stages. You kind of tilt your pan back and forth. What I want to see when I put a piece of meat or fish in a saute pan are little bubbles all around the surface where it's touching. That means that there's enough oil in there for, uh, for the fish to, to, to cook properly. Question? Yeah. Good question. Do you let the fish become, get the room temperature before you cook it? Yes. Take it about 20 minutes. That's about how long it's been sitting here. It was in the ice before I started my demo. I took it out, it's been sitting there for about 20 minutes. You do that with meat, you do that with fish, you do that with just about everything, especially if it's thick. Now, if you want to cook something quickly and it's thin and you don't want to cook it all the way through, keep it in the fridge for the last minute and then, then blast it in, in, a hot, in a hot oil or something. So, haven't touched it yet. I'm seeing the bubbles are on the outside, or, and, and that's making me happy. I'm just looking for my fish patch. Got one. Now I'm just gonna make sure it's not you shake it a little bit. Get that so you know it's not sticking. We start adding butter. Boom. Ooh. A lot of butter. Yes. Yeah. More butter. More butter. More butter. Uh huh. In this situation, so the fish is going to be kind of like sitting the top portion of the pan. The butter's melting down at the bottom portion, and you'll see this is a great time of yours to add. When when that butter starts to caramelize, that's when you start basting it over the top of the fish, and basting it, and basting it. Now, this is great for cooking meat too. Like if you get yourself a flat iron steak, right? Flat iron, really good piece of meat. Put it in a hot pan like this, wait for the butter to melt. And just about the time you see all those brown bits here, I throw in whole mm. cloves of garlic. Like this. I've never done this before. I've never done this before, but we're going to do it here just to show you. Yeah. See? Throw some garlic in there. Now you got garlic butter. <laughs> you're going to be cooking your fish in garlic butter. You can put th fresh thyme leaves in there and crackle, like, you know, like a forest fire. And uh, it adds flavor as well. So you can add whatever flavor you want to this, you know? I wouldn't add cilantro to it because cilantro is not one of those herbs that holds up to uh, hot butter. You know, just wilt and it tastes like nothing. So we get a caramelized butter now. You see that browning? Mm -hmm. So I put that over the top, baste it. Nice and green. It's really good. All that hot fat is now starting to cook from the top. It's the part that's touching the pan is still caramelizing or browning. And the fish is starting to firm up a little bit. Which is natural and expected. Don't be cheap with, don't be cheap with the corn. <laughs> so now the garlic's starting to brown. Now if you're if you're doing this you're cooking a piece of meat and the garlic browns and you're you're really happy with it, what do I do with it? I'll just stick it on the top of the, the protein and it stops cooking. You know, you, got, you always got a hot and a cold part of uh, whenever you're cooking, you know, if there's, you need an out. Well, there we go, there's the wind. Thank you, wind. <laughs> there's a flame on here, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, there is. I'm very surprised. <laughs> I like being surprised in this situation. So, Perry started out as a steakhouse, as a uh, as a butcher shop 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I believe in the southeast uh, Texas. There's still a couple of those butcher shops uh, in existence. 
and young Chris uh, said to his dad, Dad, you know, I want to do a restaurant. Start serving food. So they started serving food in their butcher shop, and they grew and they grew and they grew, and now they've got 15 stores all over. It's an incredible story, and there's a lot of love and culture that goes into this. You know, the, uh, the infrastructure of uh, the Perry's group. I am the master development chef. What does that mean? I get to work with the greatest guys in the world, just having, getting creative and, make, and having fun. For you, chef. <laughs> so here, look at that garlic. Oh, baby. I don't think I'm going to add garlic to this recipe from now on. I'm enjoying this so much. Okay. Now I'm going to peek, I'm going to peek under here and see if it's starting to caramelize the way I want it to. Oh, yeah. Some nice color on there. And guess what? It's going to continue picking up more color as I keep putting these caramelized bits of brown butter on top. This fish is probably about medium rare to rare still because it's such a large piece of fish. You want this to be medium, you know, when you're finished. You want it to flake. So I'm going to keep basting it, basting it, basting it. Okay. Put that off on the side here. If I can. So, Cooking. Now I'm going to start plating the fish. Final presentation. Can you see this? Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry if you can. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of the uh, red pepper coulis in the center the plate. better than corn and peppers are so <laughs> good together so it's it's kind of like a polenta slash creamy corn sea bass, place the sea bass on top of the red pepper coulis, mm -hmm. on top of the corn puree, turn off our flame, and we garnish it with some micro cilantro on top, and you're about five minute walk from getting this dish at Perry's uh, right here at Memorial City. Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. taste of what I just demonstrated, please come up front. We'll, we'll form a line over here and we'll just give you a, give you a little plate. All right? Thank you very, very much. Enjoy. Get an upload close picture of the dish. There's that. Hi, Chef. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for the great demonstration. Well, thank you. 